dead. They think it's all over. It is power. Hello and welcome to They Think It's All Over. David is still away working for a living, so it's welcome back to guest captain Matthew Pinsent. With Matthew and Jonathan this week is a British steeplechasing legend who says that his greatest achievement is beating John McCrick at snooker. If only the words at snooker weren't in that sentence. <laughs> John Franco. With Stephen Rory this week is a comedian who says she derives her humour from the worst excesses of male behaviour, which invariably happen when they're together in a group. So God knows why she's here then. <laughs> Joe Brand. <laughs> we kick off the show with some unlikely excuses. Steve's team, your question concerns those bosom buddies, Lennox Lewis and Mike Tyson. So what was Mike Tyson's excuse for kicking off their press conference punch-up and taking a bite out of Lennox's legs? Why did he hit him? Mm. Is it because there wasn't a woman handy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or did he say, I apologise for hitting Lennox, but I, unfortunately I appear to be suffering from a severe personality disorder characterised by paranoid ideation, schizoid features and unresolved issues in my childhood. Yeah. <laughs> in other words, I'm a bit of a bastard. <laughs> Joe, have you ever been in a fight? Yeah, I have. I knocked someone out once. Oh, unlike Steve, he's never knocked anybody out. <laughs> Roy, I, I'm going to ask you to lay off Steve. I think it's unfair. Steve Davis, one of the sporting greats of this country, and you sit there, you big fat bearded arsehole. Yes, I won't be <laughs> You leave him alone. I remember him in his glory days. I saw you once. I saw him stride up confidently, and straight away he got a one four seven. I was across the road waiting for a one three four, but it was. <laughs> You're good at having a go at men, aren't you, Joe? No, you Rory. The great quote of yours. I think it's very funny. I should read out. Oh, Joe, <laughs> Joe Brown once said, "You can't trust a man with testicles." <laughs> it's quite funny. Do you, you mean you can't trust a man with your testicles? Or? <laughs> So I he's think just, he's just upset because I haven't got my sheep's outfit on tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, that's unfair. I've seen Joe in the shower and she's got a lovely set of bollocks. Tell you, I went for it, didn't I? Could we have a look at that clip again, though? Because I noticed something most unusual. I don't know if we could uh, show uh, it again. I, I, hopefully, yes. So you've got Lennox looking, you know, Mandy with the lady's hat on. What's that angler doing there? <laughs> <laughs> that's a look, he's a fisherman. <laughs> Someone said there's a weigh-in, he had a very big pie kid call. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly, he is embroiled. Was it a fix, but the, the, um, the bouncers didn't, weren't told, and so they... Yeah, roughly, I'll give you three points for that, yeah. Tyson claimed that the whole thing was meant to be a PR setup, but that nobody had remembered to tell Lewis's bouncer. Although Tyson's management claimed that he was responding angrily to a shouted claim by Xboxer Mitchell Rose that he was a homo. Tyson screamed back, I'll f you in the arse, you punk, you f faggot. You ain't man enough to f with me, bitch. I'll f you till you love me, you faggot. <laughs> hey. A visibly shocked Sue Lawley said, and now record number four. <laughs> Matthew's team, it's the sport of kings for you. Here's the Bay Gelding Quicksall Cross It in action at Southall. And uh, at this stage, old Quicksall Cross It is last. Never mind. And they're just going a little bit fast for old Quicksall Cross It, who's finding it all a bit too much. And it looks as if Quicksall Cross It has been pulled up. Now, even though Quicksall Cross it failed to finish the race, his handlers still held a huge celebration party afterwards. But why? Matthew's team. Nick, before we get on to the so-called sport of kings, <clears throat> may I address the nation on the burning issue of a certain Mr. Jamie Figston? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want you to open up your hearts to this young fella. Yeah. He's not the first to be uh, attracted to the world of hardcore fetish behaviour. Why, my dear friend Steve Davis over there is often found in the evenings allowing young men with large sticks wearing waistcoats to walk all over him. <laughs> <laughs> it's very thought for Jamie. You love it, don't you? 
John, I've got a serious question about waiting, if I may raise it with you. You know, yeah, those, you know those colourful little shirts and outfits they wear? I rather like those. Where do you get them, and do they do them in grown-up size? <laughs> What advice would you give to any tiny people watching at home who might want to <laughs> start with I mean, how did you get, you know, as far as you did? <laughs> I used to sleep with the trainers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's one up from the horses, anyway. <laughs> so they celebrated, even though Quicksilver cross it lost. Yeah. Before Jockey got off and said he wouldn't run another race until he was inside a greyhound. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Rory's agent said about him being <laughs> He had run up the longest losing sequence right, of any right. horse. <laughs> John, you, you... That's all right, he does nothing. It just... <laughs> <laughs> I, bet, I bet he's the one who will get three medals at the end of the bloody <laughs> <laughs> He's not saying a word. <laughs> There's six people here now that know exactly how Stephen Redgrave feels. Yeah. Right? <laughs> he just turns up and takes the money! <laughs> we'll go with this answer. <laughs> it's correct for three points. Well done, John. Yeah. <laughs> yes, the race you saw was Quicksilver Cross its 100th successive sporting contest without a winner. Unique achievement for any British horse. Quicksall cross it is so bad he hardly ever finishes a race. Punters who back him always end up pissed off, but not as furious as the 93-year-old suffragette who's still waiting for him at the finish line. <laughs> we just can't understand why he keeps losing. We've adjusted his diet, his saddle and his training methods, but nothing seems to work, said his jockey, Big Cliff Lazarenko. <laughs> And at the end of that round, Matthew's team have three points and Steve's team have three points. <laughs> round two, as our old friend Sporting Bluff, Steve, Rory and Joe, your question concerns Watford's manager Gianluca Vialli. Here he is spurring on his boys to a valiant defeat against Arsenal in this year's FA Cup. Back in by Fisk, it's a great header! exactly what Watford required and Jan Luca Vialli starts to believe again what we would like to know is what really puts the lead in his pencil Jan Luca Vialli says he gets an orgasm from gambling on horse races Jan Luca Vialli says he gets an orgasm from watching Manchester United Jan Luca Vialli says he gets an orgasm from eating his mother's cooking but in the interest of fairness can I just point out Steve an orgasm is that nice tingly feeling you get after a good safety shot <laughs> Okay, so Steve, Steve. I this thought he used to make you blind, not bald. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a bit unpleasant and pervy that it might be his mother's cooking. I know, I thought that as well, yeah. Guess who's coming at dinner? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Imagine his mother saying, Hey, Gianluca, what's the matter with my pasta? You're not shoot your load yet. <laughs> It would actually make quite a good episode of Ready Steady Cook, though. <laughs> <laughs> it does taste of pancake mixture, doesn't it? <laughs> Do you think there are any old grannies who are big fans of Steve Holmes sitting there thinking, I really fancy a pancake now? <laughs> <laughs> You're only jealous because you haven't got any old fans who think because they think you're too rude. Whereas I am like nice clean cut young lad. Plays I dress up in quality clothes all the time, not like some of the crap. You're you dressed wear. like a bloody U-boat submarine captain. <laughs> 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 Admiral Jernick. <laughs> it's a directive from our sports association. We're not allowed to wear bow ties anywhere. Roll next to us are very in. Are you really not allowed to wear bow ties anywhere? We've been told that none of the snooker players have got any personality. Right. They've asked me what I can do about it. Yeah. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> I like that chubby one. What's his name? Chubby one. The little chubby one that looks about 12. <laughs> Uh, Stephen Lee. Oh yes. Why? Oh, do you like because it? we look like we could have a good time at dinner together. Right. <laughs> Joe, I'm telling you now, if you went to bed with him, he'd just think he was on a bouncy castle. <laughs> you would get no satisfaction. You want a real man like this, a big fella. Jonathan, can I just say something? Rory and I can check out of Fat Club, but you can't check out of Twat Club. <laughs> I, I hope you're cheering me on there and not the <laughs> <laughs> What's the question? What's the question? Gianluca Vialli. 
I assume it's Manchester United. Isn't it? You think? You think therefore that Matthew is telling the truth? Let's see if you're right. <laughs> Yes, Matthew had it right. Gianluca Vialli said recently, when United are at their best, I am close to orgasm after 90 minutes. Full orgasm comes 27 minutes later at the end of injury time. <laughs> there are days when United have no effect on Vialli at all, when Luke Chadwick's face comes up on the giant screen. <laughs> To be serious, though, Viali is a cultured man who brings Italian sophistication to everything he does. Even at the height of passion, Gianluca has a balsamic vinegar stroke. <laughs> Matthew, Jonathan and John, keeping the Italian theme, your question concerns the old lady of Turin, Juventus. Here they are on their way to beating Paris Saint-Germain to win the European Super Cup. Juventus are part-owned by Luciano Pavarotti. Uh, uh, Juventus are part owned by Colonel Gaddafi. Juventus are part owned by the Vatican. Gaddafi, uh, does his son not play for the Libyan football team even though he's crap? Apparently he got the idea from Johan Cruyff. <laughs> the Vatican were going to sponsor him, weren't they? And then they pulled out the last moment. <laughs> Pavarotti, I know he's a football fan, he loves Juventus, he's got a season ticket. Cost him three tenners, apparently. I think it's really admirable that you've got the crankies in to write your jokes. <laughs> yeah. right. Pavarotti put in three offers for Juventus, didn't he? Yeah, three tenners. Three tenders! Three tenders! Three tenders! For God's sake, man! I'm sorry. <laughs> So what are we actually going to go with? Jordan's a Catholic, isn't she? I doubt it. I saw her party once, she knelt down and took the host in her mouth. Have <laughs> <laughs> you seen it? I'm back! I'm back! I'm back. I'm back. <laughs> Apparently she charges 30 quid. Anyway... Uh... <laughs> what do you reckon? Vatican. Vatican. Go on. Vatican? Yeah. Okay, so you think Rory was telling the truth? Let's see if you're right. Oh. No. no, in fact... Steve was telling the truth. Colonel Gaddafi has recently poured his fortune into Juventus. The Libyan leader bought 6.4 million shares in the club, making him the second biggest shareholder after Fiat. Juventus now looks set to buy Leeds bad boys Jonathan Woodgate and Lee Bowyer, but say the pair are unlikely to go straight into the first team. Colonel Gaddafi needs them to settle a border dispute with Algeria first. <laughs> <laughs> and at the end of that round, Matthew's team have three points and Steve's team have six. <laughs> round three sees the shock return of our celebrations round. Matthew's team, here's Manchester City's Darren Huckabee scoring against Millwall. Pitch. And he finds Manavia. It's a good pullback. It is well taken by Huckabee. And Manchester City lead by two goals to one. So, why applaud an empty stand? Is that Viali on a scouting mission and everyone else has legged it just in case he gets too excited? <laughs> <laughs> They're not playing Stoke by any chance, because that would be quite a good turnout for a Stoke game, wouldn't it? <laughs> Go f*** yourself with a burnt <laughs> skin. Actually, it was a full stand, but when the camera panned round, at a force of habit, all the Millwall fans ducked. <laughs> <laughs> yes, some of them have been in trouble with the law so often they turn up with pixelated faces or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Was it? It wasn't empty at all. It was just full of jockeys. We couldn't just. just, 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 just. <laughs> it worked. It worked. It worked fine. I've got no idea. Uh, give Steve a call. Find out what he's. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was him sitting at the back there with all his mates. I knew they hated each other. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. Uh, we've got no real idea for this, have we? Was there a match between Terry Griffiths and Cliff Thorburn in the Seniors World Final? So, game? nobody's got the answer right. <laughs> um, the answer is, in fact, given to us by lifelong Sky Blue fan and even more blue comedian Bernard Manning. Hurrah! The reason is, Manchester City banned all the Millwall fans. They got their own back and banned all the City fans. Just like me. And that's the reason they're applauding an empty stand.
City will be leaving Main Road next year and moving to Manchester's new Commonwealth Games Stadium. It's easy to find. It's got a big sign outside with the word Olympic crossed out. <laughs> Steve Steam, here's Sweden's Jonas Bjorkman taking the inevitable three sets to dispose of paper tiger Tim Henman at the Australian Open last week. And that's it. Well, I think we're going to see it. Here it is. The famous just... <laughs> that wasn't a celebration. That was deep vein thrombosis due to waiting for Tim to get a serve in. <laughs> Apparently, Tim has been allowed to take his tennis racket on ball planes because it's his job. OK, so he's taking his tennis racket on. If you go to Heathrow Airport at the moment and you look down the list, it's got... This is serious, right? This is serious stuff. No knives, no scissors, no blubber, no sharp objects. And right at the bottom, it's got no snooker or pool cues. <laughs> but how is it a dangerous weapon? What are you going to do, roll the pilot up behind the yellow? <laughs> No, no, we've got the seven times world champion Stephen Hendry, we've got ten times world champion Phil Taylor, can't take his darts on board, and Tim Emman can get his tennis rackets on board. It's just not right, I'm sorry. If they threw a dart on a plane, would it stay where it is as the plane keeps moving? <laughs> Is there a reference to um, when I used to sort of tour Swedish comedy clubs? I remember there was this sort of very famous. I'm surprised you went to Sweden and went in a comedy club. <laughs> <laughs> and there was a, a, a somebody who did this silly walk. I can't remember what they called something like Galan Sparkana and Aftershave or something. <laughs> I mean, I could be wrong. I'm just plucking at you know, straws now. I, I will have to look into that, but I'll give you three points. Well done. <laughs> You cheating <laughs> It was actually a tribute to his country's top TV comedy duo, Gallant Scarpana and Aftershave, one of whom apparently does an hilarious impression of a gymnast. So Jonas Bjorkman bases his game on a TV performer, and so does Tim Henman. He plays like Dale Winton. <laughs> Tim and Greg Rosetsky clashed at this year's Australian Open when Tim made the unbelievable claim that tennis tournaments apparently have a second week. <laughs> That's it, I just wait long enough, I'll get a laugh. <laughs> no, I've just realised, I think they're in a different time zone. <laughs> yeah. And at the end of that round, Matthew's team have three points and Steve's team have nine. I'm with you, it seems very dodgy, very dodgy. Now, it's time for Rory's palms to get even more sweaty as we play Field of Sportsman. <coughs> Stephen Rory, oh. blindfolds on when you get out there. You have 90 seconds in the traditional way to work out who you're manhandling. Can I, can I just say, if it's, a, if it's a bloke, should I come out and grab his cock or something? <laughs> <laughs> just checking. Yes, yes, I think so. <laughs> and can we have our first mystery guest, please? <laughs> Time starts now. I see. Now, last last week I got hit by a boxer, so I'm going to be very careful. This week. Hello, I we found something down we here. We have been quite lucky. Oh, what's, what's this? What have you got? I've got wood. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> oh, hello. <laughs> I just checked. Not wearing boxing gloves. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Why is it you always get the good jobs, I get all the inanimate objects? Oh, likes attract. <laughs> <laughs> this is a such a... <laughs> what have we got there? I don't know. I no. think there's a... <laughs> I'll just see how many there, there are. Bloody hell. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> I think the contents of Jordan's van bags are falling out here. <laughs> <laughs> They're quite large, though. But you know... The... <laughs> <laughs> Gee whiz. Did that ball by any chance have any holes What's in it? What's your name? <laughs> Stick your fingers up Rory's nose and sling them at Jonathan. <laughs> <laughs> no, you got that far. I want that. I'm holding, holding hands already, anyway. Um, are we talking ten-pin bowling here, Nick? <laughs> oh. 
I'm not going to give you 10 pin bowling, that's not oh. enough. It is, in fact, Kirsten Penny, the top world 10 pin bowling okay. champion. There's a sad story when the lads that worked for us on Channel 4 used to shag this bird on, when he was married, he used to shag this bird on Wednesday nights, and he, there's an excuse that he used to go 10 pin bowling. So his wife, when his birthday came around, bought him a really nice brand new 10 pin bowling ball. So, you know, he took it like, every, every Wednesday. And then the following Christmas, they decided to have the Christmas party at a 10 pin bowling club. So he has to take his ball along. Because he goes down, there's no holes in it. <laughs> you know, you buy a boy, you have to have the finger bits cut out yourself. Yeah. So he turns up. So, so, so say be the 10, the 10 pin bowling king. No, <laughs> Just be warned. So, just be so warned. if you're a baffled wife at home, you now know the full story. <laughs> <laughs> Matthew and Jonathan, you're Come up now. Please. Come on, Kathleen, we can do it. <laughs> Those ladies' trousers you're wearing. <laughs> He's looking. <laughs> <laughs> can we have our second mystery guest, please? OK, and your time starts now. <laughs> Thank God I haven't got a blindfold on. Oh, the size of those hands, get off me! <laughs> You're not eating now, you know. Aha. Aha. Wow! <laughs> Getting warm. Careful. Oh, wow! Careful. Sorry, did I tread on you? Did you like it? <laughs> <laughs> She's a lady and she likes a bit of rough. <laughs> What's the what the? <laughs> oh, yeah. Hey! She's Siamese twins. <laughs> Yang and Yang. Two of them. <laughs> joined at the foot. Is this a horrendous luge accident? <laughs> <laughs> leg? Other I've, leg. I've got. Shoulders. Yeah. This well, little heady, I'm running. We need more than just counting the body parts. Well, I tell you what, you know, these split ends, you could really deal with quite easily. <laughs> Have they come to the wrong studio? Are they here for Jamie Thigston? <laughs> is it leg wrestling? It's not leg top wrestling. Toe it's toe wrestling. It is, in fact, our yes. top toe wrestlers, Karen Davis and Pam Clark. Cool. Well, oh, oh, sorry, I haven't been hurt. And so, the scores at the end of the round are Matthew's team with six and Steve's team with nine. We end proceedings by playing the name game. This week, all the clues have to be given as mimes. The team in the lead goes first, which is Steve's team. Pass those along to Rory, please, Joe. Thank you very much. Miming only. As many names as you can in the next 90 seconds. And your time starts now. Um, uh, uh, eating food. Um, oh. <laughs> Joe, look, if you are. Yeah, yes. Excellent. <laughs> um, eating. Uh, Tennis player. Tim Henman. Oh, no, ah, oh, Bjorkman. Bjorkman. Uh, Elf. Yeah. <laughs> 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 exercise I've had in six years. <laughs> uh, right, ah. Snooker, Steve, me, Steve Davis. No, uh, <laughs> large, large... Oh, uh, uh, Ronnie O'Sullivan. Yep, of course. <laughs> <laughs> A woman with no Move. hair. <laughs> A bald person. Yeah, yeah. excellent. <laughs> Lo Goalkeeper. Goalkeeper. Fabi oh, Fabian uh, Fabian Bartels. Bartels. Yes, Bartels. lovely stuff. That's what I like. <laughs> oh, Darren Huckabee. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Imagination. Imagination. 
Footballer. 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 Uh, Heskey. 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 Okay. Golfer. Gol golfer. Uh, Colin uh, Montgomery. Colin Montgomery. <laughs> Oh, John Parrott! Okay, so you move on to 16. Which so means what do we need? We need 11. <laughs> we can do it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, Give a ready? second. Hold on. Now! Oh, okay, um. Uh, jockey. The... Cricks or crosses. Yeah, well okay. done, you. Come on, you're good. Okay. Runner. <laughs> Linford Christie? Yeah! <laughs> um, okay. Uh, yeah. Steve Redgrave. Mm. <laughs> right. Steve, Steve Davis. Davis. <laughs> okay. Steve Mo Racing Neil. Driver. Oh, uh, Jensen, Jensen Button. Button. <laughs> okay, um, um, ooh. Um, Jonas Bjorn. Um, no, no. Shoe. Toe wrestlers. Rest yeah. Toe wrestlers. Yeah, I'll give you that. <laughs> okay. Um, this one. Swimmer. <laughs> That's with Booker Ian Thorpe. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh. <laughs> Tim Henman. Tim Henman. <laughs> 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 Serena Williams. No, Serena. No, no, no. Tennis. Big tits. Go on, you must have been a fusher. <laughs> you can still do it. Oh, I love nice, the, nice belly ring, oh, by the way. The Shut up, Billy! <laughs> <laughs> football. Yeah. Sexy football. Beckham. S <laughs> Scotsman. He's a Scottish footballer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tiny Dockey. Jockey Frankie Dottori. Dottori. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to tell you. Go tell on. us the good news. I've got to tell you, Jonathan, you've lost, but you've retained your dignity. Thank you. <laughs> Matthew Seymour, 15. This week's winner is Steve Seymour, 16. Very really close to what we've got. Do us a favour, mate. Give us a lift. I can't go on the tube like this. <laughs> I think I'm creating milk. Is that possible? <laughs> <laughs> Is that clinically possible? Yeah. <laughs> so our thanks to Matthew, Jonathan and John, Steve, Rory and Joe. We're all off to reserve the seat behind Gianluca Viali. <laughs> My name's Nick Hancock. They think it's all over. It is now. More comedy to come tonight. How I Got News for You is in a moment on BBC Two. And here on BBC One with Chewing the Fat in 35 Minutes.